All right, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, I would like to welcome you to the final installment of Shelf Life Season 1 Home Edition. I've had an absolute blast cooking for you guys over the past few months, but truth be told, my flat's not a studio, I'm not a videographer, I'm just an idiot. But I want to tell you another reason why today's episode is a special one is because today is World Food Day. And we're extremely proud to have partnered with Action Against Hunger for their annual Love Food, Give Food campaign, which today gives us an opportunity to try and raise awareness of the devastating impact that COVID-19 has had on global hunger. To give you a bit of context, last year, 690 million people around the world went to bed hungry due to issues such as climate change, poverty and conflict. But of course, since the coronavirus crisis has taken hold earlier this year, it's had an absolutely devastating impact on already vulnerable communities. So we could expect that number to rise by a further 132 million. So you might be over there at home thinking, how can I help? One of the things that you can do is donate anything that you can spare. And the place that you can do that is www.donate.actionagainsthunger.org.uk and we'll be putting all the information down below in the comments. Even the smallest amount will make a huge, huge difference if we all get involved. So I really, really hope that you do. In the meantime, let's cook some food. Enjoy this. So what we're going to be making today is my variation or an interpretation of osh, which is an Afghani beef noodle soup. The noodles often are fresh pasta, traditionally. It's an amazing recipe that I first read about in Helen Siberi's book, Nosha Jian. Go get it! Yeah, this dish really reminds me of loads of different dishes from across the world. Harira in Morocco, stroganoff that's served with buttered noodles, goulash. Yeah, loads of, loads of amazing stuff. So I've got some short ribs here and I'm just going to season them with a bit of salt. You can season them with pepper if you like to, that'd be fine in this dish. But we're using chili in a couple of different forms. So I'm going to leave the pepper out here and season it well. If you don't season it well, then your braise isn't gonna taste good and you'll, you'll regret it basically. Use salt in abundance, okay? The salt that's all over this is gonna also season your sauce. So don't, just don't worry too much. I'm going in with some neutral oil. You can use olive oil. People get a bit funny about oil. I ain't funny about it. I'm gonna wait for this to get hot. Should have probably had that on earlier, shouldn't I? Classic shelf life, typical Tom. When you brown short ribs, make sure to do it for a long period of time. And don't get it too hot, because you get it too hot, your meat's gonna singe. No one wants singe meat. I'm gonna be browning those for about 10 to 15 minutes. So while my short ribs are browning, uh, I'm just gonna sort some spices out. So traditionally in Osh, there's always coriander seeds, sometimes paprika, sometimes cumin. I'm gonna follow suit there and keep it quite traditional. We're gonna go with a tablespoon of coriander seed. We're also going in with a tablespoon of cumin seed. Great, one of the most common spices in the world. One of the best, one of the best. We've got a whole cinnamon stick, which I'm gonna be leaving whole and putting in the stew. All I'm gonna do is grind this up. I'm happy with that. And then that can set aside until we're ready to, until we're ready to add it, okay? Just getting ahead of myself. So now we can probably turn these. We can turn that guy at least. He's got some good color on him. This guy too. Wow, look at that. Fantastic stuff. Now another thing I can do to get ahead of myself is think about the vegetables that are gonna be going into the base to kind of form the, like the mirepoix, but it's gonna be a loose one. It's gonna be a, a rough, rough chop situation because it's gonna be cooking for a few hours in the oven, about three. So I've got some Turkish peppers. Sometimes these can be a bit hot. So we're gonna... They're not, they're incredibly aromatic. So I'm gonna throw a few of those in there. Not traditional, but just pop what you want in. So I'm just getting rid of the seeds and then we're just gonna roughly chop this. Again, it's gonna be cooking for a good while in the oven with everything else. So you really don't have to be too precise or chop it like mega fine. Don't worry about that. There's my peppers. Then, onion. So same deal, you don't wanna go too fine with this. You don't need to, it's cooking for ages. It's all gonna melt into the sauce. So we're going rough chop just once through. No worries, so easy, it's a joke. So once these guys are ready to come out, which is pretty much now, then we can dump all that in and then build in some liquid too. Okay, I'm really happy with this. We've got some great color in the bottom of the pot and these guys look really golden brown all over. You don't want to brown them for half an hour because then the meat will irredeemably dry out. But it's going into liquid, 
So any of that brownness, don't worry if it looks dry now, it's gonna get really delicious later on. And then into this base, chuck in the cinnamon stick. Then go in with the peppers and the onions. Couple overboards. In they go too. A little bit of salt, not too much because you've had some there. That's gonna help these guys fry. And as they cook and release their moisture a little bit, they're gonna be taking on that flavor from the bottom of the pot and kind of cleaning your pot for you. How brilliant is that? These guys are just, they're cleaners. Okay, so we've got a little bit of caramelization on the edges of these and they're translucent, which is exactly where we want them to be. Don't worry that they haven't turned to mush, they'll do that later. So now I've got some tomato puree, which I'm gonna shove into the base. A good long squirt, I reckon like two heaped tablespoons. Osh is sometimes referred to as Afghani tomato soup as well. So tomato is a feature. You can use tin tomatoes if you like, but I'm just going straight for the puree. And then you kind of want to let that hit the oil because you want that to cook out a little bit. Can add a bit of a bit of an acrid taste if you don't. So that's phase one. And then I'm going to throw in about four cloves of garlic, which I've just finely grated. You can even chuck those in whole, but I want garlic flavor to be a bit more prevalent. I want it to be there. I'm going to chuck in my spices now, going with all those. And I'm also going to go in with about the same amount of paprika, just slightly less, two heaped teaspoons. So we've got four spices going in there. Fantastic, delicious stuff. So you can smell the garlic. That's hit the pan now. As soon as you can smell it, it's nearly cooked, okay? I'm just going to grab a little bit of water just to help that masala base do its thing. The moment you add water, you'll see it just becomes much more pasty and delicious. And then the all remains to do is to get some chicken stock. My wife made this. I'm really proud because it's probably the most delicious chicken stock I ever saw. She's an absolute wizard in the kitchen, Lydia. Hey, Lids. Okay, and now that's the base of our braise. All we've got to do, grab these guys, pop them back in, and you want it so that the bone side is up. In we go. I'm gonna give that a little bit more water so that they're mostly submerged. Give it a little bit more salt. And then, so now he comes up to a light simmer, and then we're gonna transfer him to the oven and he's just gonna melt away and become the most delicious sauce that's gonna be going with the noodle element of our interpretation of the ash. So while my beef's cooking in the oven, I'm gonna make my noodles. Traditionally, you wouldn't have any egg in here, but I'm gonna treat my noodles just like a normal fresh tagliatelle because lots of recipes that I've seen call for using shop-bought fresh pasta. You can go out and buy some, but of course, you can also use dried pasta. Remember, we're treating it like a carb here rather than the perfect pasta for the sauce kind of situation, okay? Best way to remember fresh pasta, you just multiply the 100 grams by eggs, large eggs usually. So what I've done is I've got 300 grams of zero zero flour, which is pasta flour. It's finely milled Italian flour. I've got that down on my surface. I've sieved that as well. I'm gonna crack three eggs for my 300 grams, straight into the mid, straight into the heart of the action there, all right? And don't crack your eggs on the side or something because then shell will go everywhere. So just crack them flat on the surface. Okay, everybody. Just seasoning up my eggs a little bit. And what you wanna do now is just break those yolks and then you wanna start mashing them together. And then once you've created like a cream in the middle that you're happy with, you can start dragging in the sides of the pasta, kind of like you're creating little avalanches um, all around the side of your volcano. Wow, what a, what a nice analogy. Now we haven't put any oil in here, don't need it. Eggs have got fat in them. And the yolk, they're about 60% fat, I think. Don't quote me on that, maybe put something here explaining exactly what the ratio is. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a foolproof method, this. Just eggs and good flour. And yeah, you can make noodles. Shout out to uh, Dom Subs, by the way. The editor of Shelf Life, Kian. Kian by the way, big fan of Dom Subs. So I put this on to say thanks to him for dealing with all my nonsense, okay? Alrighty. So it takes a while, we're getting there. As you can see, we're now getting to a place where pasta, well, it's becoming together. The egg and the flour are now coming to like a shaggy mess. And you wanna make sure that you collect all of that flour and work it into this mix. I want you to get the pasta and start working. Now I'm gonna start kneading it. Remember to gather all of that flour that's not currently incorporated and start working it in. And you wanna work this for about 10, at least 10 minutes, but you know, sometimes up to 15, just to make sure you've got really nice, smooth, silky dough. In case anything else happens to the camera, I'm just gonna say cut. <laughs> 
So, the pasta has been resting for a couple of hours in the fridge, and I've just pulled it out about half an hour ago. So I'm just gonna roll out my pasta now. I'm not promising you I'm gonna show you the whole thing because it's gonna take ages. So remember, we had 300 grams worth here. We are just gonna dust it with a little bit of flour. Remember, it can have a tendency to stick, so you need to keep everything super floured. And then you wanna press it into something that you think you can work with, and then chop it with a clean knife into manageable sections like that. See that? Uh, cool, this is to go through the pasta machine. If you don't have one, you can do it by hand, but I'd probably recommend just buying some pasta as we said earlier. So, make sure he's nice and wrapped, and then it's on over to the master machine. Wow, look at that. Oh yeah. Bring him back, fold it, fold him once. Give him a press, and then he's going back through. Remember, he's relaxed, so you wanna get him nice and silky again. Oh yeah, and you wanna continue in that vein until it's ready, okay? I'm not gonna stick around for this bit. Right, well, that was fine. And now, all you need to do is you need to get your guys, which are nice and floured, you get them, and you wanna roll them up like this, and then you wanna cut them into your desired shape. I'm going for, what am I going for? Wide tag, look at that. Look at him. And then you just wanna toss him in some flour to ensure they're not sticking together. So there we have it, guys. We made some pasta, pastini. Well done, us, eh? That was fun. Cool, now I'm gonna sit him, spread him out on a tea towel, let them dry out a little bit before we're ready to boil and dress, and then we get to monge it. <sighs> well. That smells and looks completely ridiculous. It's been about three and a half hours now. It's just like collapsing off the bone, but the meat is still like intact. Wow. Look at him. There he is. I'll take the, the bones out, but I'm just gonna pop the meat in this bowl and I'm gonna shred it back into the sauce when we're ready to serve. So I've got an amazing reduced base, which is gonna be tipped all over the noodles. Now we're gonna tip in about 150 grams of chickpeas and the starch from them will continue to loosen that sauce. This is just gonna finish cooking now for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna pop the lid on, bring it up to a simmer. We'll return the meat into that. So all we need to do now is toast some pine nuts, pick some herbs, boil the pasta, dress it. We're coming for you. My pasta's in, he's gonna be what? Two mins, just dropped him in, give him a bit of a stir just to ensure he's not sticking. Then over here, I've got a little bit of butter and into that, I'm gonna chuck in a little bit of turmeric and a little bit of pulled beaver, that's Turkish pepper flake. That's gonna give the pasta a really lovely hue, not hue Woodward, I meant hue H-U-E, okay? So you'll see that'll straight away color the butter. That's just ridiculous how these guys do. Fresh pasta, two or three minutes, that's all it needs. into the spice butter. Turn that heat off now. Look at that gang. Oh yeah. I'm gonna take a little bit of this pasta water just to loosen. Pasta water's done its job. And just give it a final toss. Get it all over your, your nice t-shirt and then down he goes, into the dish. Absolutely, yeah. Give a nice spread out. And then we're gonna to top him with the amazing pieces of beef, all shredded. You wanna leave some hunks in there, just to remind you what you're eating. And then top him with the amazing sauce. And then for the final flourish, traditionally this would be yogurt, but I'm using sour cream. Just a few dabs of this, which will marble through as you eat it some fresh mint, some toasted pine nuts. And then, just a few flecks, Paul Bieber. Uh, so there it is, dudes. That's my version of Ausch. There we go. That doesn't say World Food Day. Not sure what does. We made it. That was the hottest shelf I've ever done, but I'm very pleased to say that this is probably the best thing I've made in my life. So, shall we? I can't tell you how it smells, man. it's amazing.
That is so good. Seriously delicious. I'm giving you the recipe as always. Man. Man. Oh, I've got it all down. My favorite t-shirt. So that's it guys. That's a wrap on Shelf Life Season 1 Home Edition. Really, really hope you enjoyed the series. Really hope you enjoyed the show. And thank you especially today to Action Against Hunger for allowing us to be part of a brilliant campaign. That's the Love Food, Give Food campaign, which runs annually. But today on the 16th of October on World Food Day, we have a brilliant reason to shout about it, to raise awareness of an amazing, amazing cause. If you can donate and you haven't already, you know what to do. You head to www donate.actionagainsthunger.org.uk and give anything that you can. We recommend £10 or more. That's what I'm going to be doing. Thank you so much. See you next time or not. But stay tuned. <laughs>